Hello and welcome to another episode of Sustainability in Your Ear, the Earth 911 podcast. And it's another innovator interview uh, here on the show today. I'm joined by Dan Lamb, who's the president of the Arbor Day Foundation. And for those of you who are not familiar with or don't have Arbor Day at the top of mind, it's generally the last Friday in April. It's a holiday dedicated to the planting of trees that started in 1872 when a uh, a newspaper editor came up with a plan, and Jay Sterling Morton uh, was writing uh, in the Nebraska Territory, and, and he himself was missing trees, and trees were also an important component of the new environment that the, the, uh, the pioneers were making. They wanted to create windbreaks and so forth. So he decided to promote the idea of tree planting on one day a year. That has evolved into a national uh, holiday, uh, and it is... Um, it's an ongoing source of inspiration and support for forests, but also a great resource if you haven't visited the Arbor Day Foundation site at arborbaydayfoundation.com uh, to uh, learn about and, and even select and uh, buy trees that you can plant. So, Dan, welcome to the show. How are you today? I am well. Thank you very much for having me. Well, so the first question is, how does somebody become the president of Arbor Day Foundation? That seems like a, 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 an interesting choice. How did you get there? That's a great question. I I have made a career out of uh, nonprofit work and program development, and Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to move home, my home state of Nebraska, to work for the Arbor Day Foundation. And I, 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 from a very early age, was inspired by my parents and my mother in particular, as she instilled in me and my siblings a tree planter ethic. She loves trees, continues Mm -hmm. to love trees introduced us to Arbor Day Farm and the history of Arbor Day when we were growing up in Nebraska. And I moved away for a number of years and had a unique opportunity to come back and work for the Arbor Day Foundation. And it's it's a great place to be. Uh, I get to work with and help manage partnerships with great people like the U.S. Forest Service, state forestry agencies, professional uh, certified arborist organizations, and many others. Uh, and that's what I get to do every day is help to inspire people to plant, nurture, and celebrate trees. Well, that's that's a great way to spend your time for sure. Now, <laughs> let's talk about trees uh, and forests just in terms of our need for them as human beings. Uh, you know, cities are, are, are always building parks. They, uh, we, we have, although many times stripped away many of the trees in, in nature, we do replant them. Why do we need trees in the first place as humans? Well, I mentioned my job's great because I get to work with trees and talk about trees all the time. And and the reason it's great is because everybody intuitively likes trees. Mm -hmm. You don't very often meet folks who don't like trees. And we, they either remember the first tree they planted with their school or their grandparents, or Mm -hmm. maybe they have a favorite tree line boulevard. They walk down with their dog on a hot summer day, but Oftentimes, people appreciate the aesthetics, and we, right. we were all taught in third grade or fourth grade that trees help clean the air and clean the water, and what we know is that trees do much more than just create beauty, mm-hmm. and they do more than even just cl- clean the air and clean the water. They are a must-have in our communities and in our environment, not just a nice-to-have, and Trees are working day in and day out to help, yes, clean air, clean water, to help slow and reduce flooding and stormwater runoff issues in our communities. They're helping to shade our homes and reduce energy consumption and turn down our air conditioning bills. Mm -hmm. They're helping to remove some of the key pollutants and particulates from the air and improve our health and well-being. There are even more and more research is coming out from the healthcare community and the medical community talking about how trees help to create calming influences and are right. helping to reduce not just asthma rates, but cardiac uh, attacks and, 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 and heart issues in communities. And there are many, many benefits of trees. And the spirit of Arbor Day continues uh, to be an important message of just planting trees for the many plus benefits that come from planting trees. So let's also talk about forestry management and cleaning the atmosphere. Arbor Day, uh, each tree that we plant does uh, help to clean the air uh, in a number of ways. It also uh, enriches the soil. What 
as we look at the problems we're facing as a society with carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, uh, with wildfires taking place with greater frequency because of warming of different climates, how important is it for people to understand forestry management generally and uh, to participate in replanting in order to lower the atmospheric uh, CO2 level? It's really important. As you mentioned, forest fires, we are seeing more forest fires than ever before. Last year alone, we saw more than 5.8 million acres of forest lands destroyed by forest fires last year in the United States. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that those forests are helping to create important necessities of life for humans and for wildlife. We know that in America, 180 million Americans get their clean drinking water supplies originate on forest lands. Mm -hmm. We know that these same forest lands are helping to create important biodiversity and support for our communities. It is critical that we find a way to help restore and replant those trees to restore those environmental benefits, to help improve and retain the watershed balance in these forest lands and communities. And that's what we're doing. We're working with national forests, we're working with public lands and private lands and partners to help replant and restore forest lands. And it isn't just forest fires. It's na- other natural disasters. We're seeing the increasing frequency and some of us are even seeing the and feeling the increase in severity of natural disasters. Sure. That's why we that's why we say if ever there was a time to be planting trees. Now is that time. And that's why we are more urgently than ever working to plant trees with our partners and our members all across the country and all around the world. So now you have a a campaign called Time for Trees, and your goal is to plant 100 million trees and to create 5 million tree planters, which would mean that each tree planter plants 20 trees, I suppose. Uh, is <laughs> how, how does that... Uh, how long has that been going on and how does that step in to address things like losing that 5.2 million acres of land or of forest or wildfire, as well as the, the investment in climate recovery? So we know that trees are more important than ever because of a changing climate, because of increasing frequency of storms and fires and hurricanes, because of increasing deforestation around the globe. And that's why, As I said, we say if ever there was a time for trees, now is that time. So this spring in March, we launched the most ambitious tree planting initiative we've ever been a part of. And as you outlined, it's the Time for Trees initiative. And we're committing to planting 100 million trees because we know if we work hard and push ourselves, we have the partners and the pathway to reach that goal. Through our members, through our other partners, tree planting organizations all around the world, we are pushing ourselves to engage students, cities, other volunteers and employees, and our members in tree planting work. All of these projects are strategically planned to help restore forest lands that have been burnt by fires. We'll be planting over the next few years more than 2 million trees on public and private lands in Northern California to help with forest fire recovery. I was able to be a part of helping to distribute trees down in Florida in the panhandle in the, in the following in the wake of the disaster of Hurricane Michael, mm-hmm. helping to bring trees back to homeowners who lost their tree canopy because of the terrible hurricanes. We are, we are planting trees all across Houston uh, and all across the Gulf Coast that, that also were hit by hurricanes Maria, Irma, as we help bring tree canopy back to these communities that were hurt and damaged, all with the goal of helping to restore forests and bring, and bring that balance and the, the benefits of trees back to these communities. Well, yeah, Houston's a great example because of how little runoff control they had and and putting trees in would obviously uh, drastically reduce that type of flooding. Now, you know, we also we talk about decarbonization, lowering our, our, our carbon output, and we all, and then carbon sequestration, which trees do with the remarkable effect. Are there other uh, campaigns or programs, other approaches to reducing carbon that the Arbor Day Foundation is involved in supporting or, or educating people about? 
Yes. So trees are the most efficient, most cost effective way to help sequester carbon from the environment. And frankly, it's the most scalable way. The the United Nations and other key research institutions have recognized reforestation and afforestation as perhaps the most comprehensive and cost-effective way for us to make a real dent in the carbon battle around the world and for this planet. We are involved in a number of different ways with forestry carbon projects, including reforestation and afforestation in the Mississippi River Valley. We're working with private landowners to help restore what had agricultural lands into forest lands and, and guaranteeing the survival of those trees over the next 40 years as we build a carbon sink in one of the most economically depressed parts of the country, bringing jobs, mm-hmm. bringing environmental benefits, bringing habitat back to the Mississippi River Valley. We are also working across the U.S. and globally to improve management practices on forest lands as a way to increase carbon storage and improve ecotourism opportunities and other venture opportunities that are creating jobs and economic incentives to keep forests as forests. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, briefly explain for folks what afforestation is? I don't think everybody knows that. Sure. So reforestation is when we're able to go back in and help restore forests that had been forests, but that lost the trees because of uh, because of fires, because of disease and insects, or some other reason for the trees to be lost. Aforestation is when we're going into lands that really haven't been forests and helping to create new forest lands, brand new forest lands. Forests that would not have would not have naturally uh, created themselves as forests were right. coming in to strategically plant to create the environmental and economic benefits that those forests create. And, and as as more um, uh, farmland become is abandoned, partly because of of uh, climate change and partly because of economics, those are important opportunities to start to to a forest uh, and, and grow new forest to replace what we have already taken out. So uh, that's, that's a critically important uh, point to understand. Now you have on your site, the best tree store. <laughs> uh, and I have my, my tree plant. I, so I planted a redwood tree when my son was born. It was a, it was a probably a five-year-old tree when I got it. It's 75 feet tall now. Uh, and I look at that every day and I think not only about my son, but the act of planting it and what I intended it to be, which was a kind of a, a, a reminder for him that we all loved him and love the world that he lives in. On the site, I can shop. You have, I mean, it's it's great. You you can help me find the right tree for my, my the region of the country I'm in, the, the, for the habitat. Uh, you have different ways of, of um uh, getting them, you know, you can buy one tree or you can buy bulk seedlings. How how big is this store? Is this where most of the trees that the Arbor Day Foundation comes from? And, and, and what role should the average person uh, think about the Arbor Day Foundation filling when they're thinking about planting a tree? It's a, it's a great question. We, we have a great amount of information on our website to help people understand how to plant trees properly, which kinds of trees will be most successful based on what their interests are and where they live. And if people visit arborday.org, you can learn about the right trees for your community, more about what types of trees you're interested in. And it's all part of our mission. Again, what we strive to do as an organization is we inspire people to plant, nurture, and celebrate trees. So if someone's going to take the time to plant a tree, we want to make sure they're having as much success as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you go to arborday.org, you can learn and you can purchase trees. And and we have helped we help we have millions and millions of people every year going to our website to learn about trees. And it's a wonderful thing as we help them engage. Many, many people do buy trees through our website at arborday.org. 
and we will make sure they're getting the right trees for their communities. But many of the trees that we'll be planting through the Time for Trees initiative, millions and millions of those trees will be coming through U.S. Forest Service nurseries, okay. state forestry nurseries, and other nurseries as we're locally sourcing trees mm-hmm. to make sure we're getting the right trees in the right place for the right forest that we're trying to help create, whether those are natural forest lands or in our cities and towns. Now, uh, you also have member prices and regular prices. So tell us how to get involved in supporting the Arbor Day Foundation on a year-round basis. Well, thanks for asking, Mitch. Anyone can go to arborday.org to become a member of the Arbor Day Foundation. And whoever does become a member of the Arbor Day Foundation, we will send 10 free baby trees to them as a part of their membership, trees that are appropriate for their community and for their climate zone. And again, that's our effort and desire to help people plant trees. Also, if you become a member, we do give you discounts and other information for how how you can engage in tree planting in other ways. Mm -hmm. But the simplest way to get involved is by going to the website, arborday.org, and finding more information about trees and finding out about membership opportunities. And then uh, we, we are always looking for new ways to create engagement opportunities as well. And we just finished the Arbor Day season, but every fall and every spring, we're helping to coordinate and engage in tree planting events all around the country and all around the world. And we're excited to help people get their hands dirty, figure out how to plant trees in the right way, and help improve the communities they live in. Well, I'm looking forward to getting my hands dirty to help. So, uh, folks, <laughs> That's great. check out arborday.org. I, I, I gave you the wrong URL, URL earlier. So it is arborday.org. And shop dot arborday.org is the uh, is the store and you can donate if you'd like to have a number of trees planted so get out there and, and let's support the arbor day foundation dan thank you very much for joining us today is there anything any thoughts you'd like to leave the folks with before we end the conversation yes the only thing i would say is well, first of all thank you for having us on the on the on the show and and to talk about trees trees are one of those Things that, as I mentioned, everybody enjoys, but too often they're taken for granted. And what we appreciate is people thinking about how trees are not just creating beautiful front yards and backyards and city parks, but creating healthy, thriving, resilient communities. They're going to be adding benefits to future generations. And uh, and we appreciate you helping to spread that message. And we appreciate you planting trees, Mitch. Well, uh, thank you very much. And thanks for joining us today. Uh, folks, that's Dan Lamb. He's the president of the Arbor Day Foundation, which, of course, is at arborday.org. Uh, this is Sustainability in Your Ear, the Earth 911 podcast. And we'll be back with another innovator interview soon. I'm Mitch Ratcliffe, and I hope you have a good day. Uh-huh.